Good Thursday, world, and welcome to another episode of Band Dog Talk with the Dog God. And of course, this is brought to you by Formula One Canines, which is me. That's me. You know, frames, brains, and motors. You know how I operate with these dogs. You know, top tier, top level everything everything performance best frames best brains and best motors that's right and you know ah, as i always take that deep breath man got done uh got done with a long day of taking care of dogs it's always a lot of work uh more work than one one regular man can handle i'm not regular though i'm definitely above average when it comes to the work i put in you know what i mean so but you know just like every other day it's always something you know going on in the yard and uh but today was you know uh, today was pretty light i would say you know not, nothing crazy um still dealing with that anal prolapse situation i don't know what i'm going to do with that you know, I'm giving my, I'm giving, I'm, I'm giving my uh, Shaka son. I'm giving him about one more week. I got about another. I think he has three more of his little vet prescribed pills. You know, got him on a new diet. Um, you know, got him in his own little area. But if 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 this prolapse doesn't, you know, figure itself out, you know, I'm gonna have to take an L. You know, I'm I'm not going to be dealing with that. I'm not going to spend the money because I already spent about fifteen hundred on him to try to figure it out. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to spend no more. I'm not going to spend no more. It's just it's not worth it for me to spend that type of money. Yeah, I, I wanted to keep him. Yeah, he's valuable um, to my genetic, you know, my genetic laboratory, um, being that he's, you know, two times my recipe. And that was really the whole purpose behind me keeping him is because of the genetics and, you know, just doubling down on my my uh, performance pit bull genetic recipe. You know, I was going to go ahead and stock his semen up. You know what I mean? But if if he doesn't figure this prolapse out himself with me, you know, doing what I got to do to help him figure it out. If he don't help me on his end, I'm going to have to put him down. You know, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that, man. Every day it's a, it's a pain in the ass already just trying to you know, take care of him and stuff like that. So God willing, he figures it out, but you know, Hey, it is what it is. A hey, big salute to you. RKBB man. Welcome back, brother. Welcome back. Welcome back. Let me, let me, let me pop you up in here, man. What, what'd you just say, brother? You said, uh, uh, chaos granddaughter just hit just his pups. This sixth generation of my blood on the ground. Okay. Pups, uh, were born the other day. This is a grandfather, granddaughter breeding. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Okay, so you still pushing through. I like that, man. Congratulations, too. Congratulations on, on you being able to keep your line active. You know what I'm saying? So definitely want to give you a big salute on that, man. And, uh, of course, welcome back. You know what I mean? Welcome back. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm running strong, 28 strong, family. You know, 28 strong with this band dog talking. Like I always tell um, the people that show up, man, we just, you know, we, we going to get better as, as time go on, you know, cause more time, more information, more information to give. And, you know, being a dog man or dog woman, it's every day, every day you're learning something every day. We, we in the field, we learning something, man. So um, big salute to you, RKBB um, tonight. You know, I wanted to talk about this. I've talked about this, um, previously on uh uh well on my ig i have my my paid subscription for my subscribers and i'm i i talked about this briefly um you know uh to my subscribers about um dogs with papers and dogs without papers you know what's the value right you know as far as you know actually having a you know and a superior dog right and it doesn't have papers and you know still superior in, in its performance and 
you know, structure, whatever that you see that gives it that grade of superior, you know, versus a dog that is good, right? You know, it's a good dog, but it has, you know, let's say that outstanding paperwork, you know, to back it, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to talk about this uh, tonight because, um, you know, especially for us that, that do band dogs, um, we're able to look at a dog for what the dog is versus, you know, having to have a dog that's papered because, you know, you want to show that it's purebred or whatever else, you know, to help your sales. Um, you know, us doing band dogs, you know, we're able to, you know, just cook up based off of the dog. So I, like I said, I wanted to talk about this and elaborate on, on this tonight just so that, um, you know, you guys can have an understanding of what's important, you know, and this is always coming from my perspective, isn't it? You know, I, I can't give it from anybody else's perspective. I'm always coming from the field, you know what I mean? And that's where I'm at. I'm in the field with it every day. You know, I'm live in the field dealing with dogs day in, day out, no days off, you know, trial and error type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, who's who, who better than to give it to you than me, man, the dog God, man? You know what I mean? Coach. So, you know, tonight we're going to dig deep into this subject matter and drop some jewels, drop some game. You know what I mean? Hopefully that will give you guys a clear perspective on, you know, what's important, you know, the paperwork, stellar paperwork or a stellar doll, which one is more important. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take a sip, man. Like I said, it's been a long day. Um, If y'all like y'all herbal sensation, I know RKBB love his herbal sensations. Go ahead and roll one up, RKBB. Get comfortable. You know, I'm going to go ahead and sip this vodka. Um, lemonade, I keep it simple. You know how I keep it, y'all. Kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. I keep it simple, man. My life's already complicated. So for me, I got to keep things simple. <laughs> because of the complicated things I have in my life. So this uh, vodka lemonade is going to help calm the edge for me. Um, after a long day of dogs and, you know, we're going to get into the subject matter, man, and break it all the way down, make it make all, you know, make it make sense. So cheers to y'all, man. Ah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm coming from my perspective now my experience dealing with dogs and dealing with dogs with paperwork and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? And so I bought my first official paper dog. It was an ADB. It was an ADBA um, papered red nose pit bull. And at that time, this was 1998, man. I think I was like, you know, I'm going to tell my age on me. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I think I was like maybe 18, in 98, 18, probably 17, 18, I don't know, 18, 17, somewhere in there. Anyway, I bought my first paper dog. Now, that was a big thing for me, okay, around my peers, around my homeboys, around my, my, my partners, right? Because we were used to buying the backyard pits at that time. And I had a job. I was working for Pepsi, man. <laughs> Can you believe that? I actually had a job. Uh, at Pepsi, man, I was driving one of those, their little snack trucks and stuff, man, at 18, man. You know what I mean? Um, and that's when I graduated. When I graduate Anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going too far down the rabbit hole. But anyway, I got my first dog, paper dog in 98. It was a red nose uh, pit bull. I named him Angel. And so I felt a level of prestige at that time because a lot of my partners didn't have paper dogs. You know what I'm saying? So when I came and, you know, I said, yeah, I got my dog. He come with papers. You know, it gave me that, you know, it gave me that, ah, ah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what? Your dog got papers? You know, it gave me that type of feeling. Now, like I said, I didn't know nothing about paperwork other than if my dog had papers, it, it, it meant more value, right? It meant my dog was at a higher level because it was paper. And most of my homeboys didn't have paper dogs. So, boom, from that first dog, I only wanted dog with, you know, dogs with papers, okay, at that point, okay? Fast forward, I had another partner, and at the time, I was looking, actually, it was, I actually sold that pit because I moved, 
uh, from the area I was in, so I had to sell them. So I sold that pit that I that was papered. I sold them to a, 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 a one of my Mexican partners. He bought them, and then I moved to where I needed. You know, I moved to, and I got me an apartment. I didn't have no, I couldn't have a dog in an apartment, so I moved to an apartment. And long story short, you know, I miss having a dog. You know what I mean? I miss having a dog, and I had a partner of mine who knew somebody that was, you know, going hard with the pits. And at that time, I was really into the pits. And, uh, you know, he had a chocolate red nose and I wanted a chocolate red nose. You know what I mean? So I'm like, ah, oh, man. And I asked my homeboys, like, yo, is he paper? And he's like, nah, he's not paper, man. But he going, you know, he, you know, come just come over, man. He gonna let him go for the low, man. He's, you know, $150. I'm like, ah, I need the papers though. He's like, no, no, come through. So anyway, I went over there, y'all. And I, you know, I seen the dog. I saw the mom. I didn't see the dad, but I saw the mom. The mom was dope. I was like, oh, the mom, that's a bad bitch. You know what I mean? And, you know, had a whole litter of, like, chocolate dogs in there, man. And I was like, oh, those is clean, you know. He's like, man, you know, man, what you got? I was like, oh, I don't know. They're not papered. You know what I mean? Because I was so hip on paper. I need the paperwork. He's like, man, $100. You can take it. Hundred. I was like, all right. All right, man. Boom. I bought it for 100 bucks, right? Bought this dog. No papers now. 100 bucks. I get this dog. And it was cool. You know what I mean? It was cool for the moment. But. Over time, you know, he he just wasn't working out for me as far as like, you know, his, his intelligence and things of that nature. It just wasn't clicking for me. So I think I kept him till he was about six months old, man. And I scrapped him. You know, I'm like, man, I'm giving this dog away. I don't like him. You know what I'm saying? And he's not papered. You know, you know, what I, mean? I you know, I just gave him away to somebody. I was very disappointed. So at that point, right there, I was like, man, I can I ain't never buying no dogs with no papers. From, from that dog, I was like, I, I'm, I'm never buying no dogs with no papers. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's how I felt at that time. So, fast forward now. We in 2005. Fast forwarded. And I already told myself I'm not buying no dogs with papers, uh, without papers, excuse me. Um, at that time, uh, the blue, the blue uh, pit bulls was in. Okay? And... I remember the first time I seen one, okay, one of my partners, partners had one. Not even my partner, my partner's partners actually had one. And I was like, yo, that shit look clean. You know, it's like how I used to be with them red nose, them red dogs back in the day, back in 98 when I had them red dogs, red, red noses. When I saw that blue dog, that blue pit bull that he had, I was like, yo, that shit is raw. Because it, it reminded me of them red nose, but it was just blue. It was, you know, gray or whatever. I mean, they called it blue, but it was a gray color to me. But it reminded me of, of what I was fucking with back in, in, in 98. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the boy was hot. Hot. You know what I'm saying? Muscled up, but it was gray. And so that shit was popping. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, well, I want one of those off the top. I was like, I want one of those. And he told me, hey, man, this, you know, I pay, you know, I think he said, I paid 2500 for this. I'm like, what? I said, how much did you pay for that? He said, 2500 I was like, oh, my God. I mean, I was I was sticker shocked when he smacked me with that price tag when he paid, right? I'm like, damn, 2500 He's like, yeah, this cost me $2,500. i am like, damn. So I was a little bit out of my league at that time. But, you know, I had the bread, but I wasn't. I, I I wasn't prepared for that price tag. I'm used to paying five hundred dollars, man. Three, I think I paid three fifty for my uh my red nose. Somewhere around there I paid. But anyway, fast forward, man. I'm hooked on that on that blue pit that I seen. So me and my partner at that time, you know, we did our research, and you know, he was like, man, I want to get into the dogs too, and we had some money. You know, what I mean, we had some money. We was in the we was in the real estate game at that time. In 2005 so we had you know we had some good money man me and my partner so he's like man let's let's go and do some research and let's find us some dogs you know but let's get them you know let's get us some blue dogs and shit you know what i'm saying because that shit was hot that shit was fire you know what i mean that shit was fire I'm like cool so anyway we started doing our research and you know i got me a dog it was a chocolate pit i got him from pennsylvania and then my partner got a blue uh, a blue pit bull uh from arkansas and so boom you know and they were papered okay both of them were dual registered okay now this is you know this is another status level that i felt like i reached at that point in 2005 because i was like i gotta get papers but i actually had breeders that i was buying from that me and my partner bought from that had their dogs dual registered ukc and adba registered you know what i'm saying so 
you know, now I got I, before I had ADBA paperwork so I'm, on my first pit, but now I'm getting dogs. You know, we bought dogs with that were dual registered from two different breeders, but they had them dual registered. A A B, uh, excuse me, not A B K C. I'm sorry, they weren't even out yet. U K C and A D B A. So now, boom, I got dual registered. Now I'm thinking, okay, now shit, I'm I'm popping, and you know, I'm you know, your dog is registered. Yeah, what's your you know, yours is A D B A. You know, and I'm I'm flexing now. Yours, what you oh, mine's is A D B A. Oh well, guess what? I just got me two. You know what I'm saying? I got me a chocolate red nose, look like a butterfinger. And then also I got me a damn blue, all blue bitch, female bitch, and they both dual register. I got AKC, excuse me, UKC and ADBA. Okay, so now I'm on a super flex, you know, because I got my paper dogs and I got dual register. You know what I'm saying? I'm smacking the ADBA and the UKC on my dogs, right? So now, okay, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in there, you know. You know, we actually got our dogs for a good price. You know, I didn't pay the twenty five hundred. You know what I mean? I actually got a very good price. I paid a thousand dollars for my chocolate, my chocolate mail that I bought from Pennsylvania. And then um, I was actually the one that was negotiating a deal on the one that my partner bought. I was able to talk my uh, talk homeboy out there in Arkansas. You know, I was able to talk him down. He wanted I think he wanted twelve hundred. I talked him down to six hundred. You know what I'm saying? For a bitch. So I, mean, I got his for 600. So I came out 1600 with both. But anyway, you know, I felt like I was really, you know, I was, I was, I was in there because I had the paperwork, y'all. You feel what I'm saying? I felt like I was, you know, uh, above par. You know, par being your dog's is paper, but I, my dog's is dual registered. So as the dogs grow up, and you know, we're we're assessing the dogs and. You know, I breed the dogs, you know, we sell the puppies to our homeboys. I keep some, you know, I'm learning about the dog game at this point. And this is from 05, 2005 till about 2010. I'm in the process of learning the game as I'm a hobby breeder at that time, y'all. I'm a hobby breeder. Okay. I'm, I'm learning on the job. I don't have no experience in the breeding game itself you know in the breeding politics how these dogs were created i have no clue i get my scroll right my pedigree scroll i don't have no clue how to read it i, I can read it i can you know i got common sense i see the parents grandparents great grandparents but i don't understand genetically what that means you know what i'm saying at that point I learned about purple ribbon, right? Because UKC has the purple ribbon. I learned about grand champion, champion, all that stuff, you know, through the ADBA. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not really, you know, corresponding all the dogs, relating all the dogs to what I'm trying to create in my genetic pool. I'm not relating that. I'm just like, oh, you know, it's almost like having a pink slip. That's how it was in from 05 to 2010 when it came to my paperwork. I just, you know, your dog got papers? Yeah, my dog's a dual register. Look at my pink slip. That's how I seen it. You know what I mean? I, I was not doing breedings based off of those paperwork. So as I was, you know, studying the game, you guys, I was wondering why certain, you know, dog men or dog women, really, I would say dog men. I didn't really see too many dog women at that time um, doing dogs. At least the dogs I was liking. I was Wonder why they dogs was looking a certain type of way and my dogs weren't. You know, like I was seeing dogs that were, you know, that, that you know, phenotypes was different than what, you know, I would think of a pit bull. Whether it had the size, whether they were wide, you know, all these things that I, I wasn't getting out of my genetics. I was seeing these these big time breeders having dogs like that and they were getting stupid you know, just crazy, ridiculous numbers for their offspring, for their puppies. And so I'm like, how are these guys getting these dogs to be, let's say, so big or, you know, the structure like this, that, and the third, but then they're calling them this and they're calling them that, right? So I'm still, I'm, I'm green. I'm still green as I'm, you know, a hobby breeder. And and I'm I'm breeding, right, my dogs and, you know, I'm trying to look into the pedigree now. I'm trying to look and see is like, okay, are dogs like those in my pedigree? So I start looking into the paperwork and, you know, trying to match 
genetic characteristics, if I could find a picture of a dog in my pedigree, does it look like some of those dogs that these guys are getting top tier dollars for? You know, I'm like looking for them, but I couldn't find it in my pedigree. So I'm puzzled, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, at the time, I'm still a hobby breeder. It's not something that I'm trying to make money off of at that time. You know what I mean? Jerry Hurley, man, big salute to you, man. We cooking, baby. You know how we do. We cooking, man. You know what I mean? Like, you guys can always hit rewind button later on. But, you know, we, we talking about this. So, matter of fact, let me put it on the ticker. Let me put it on the ticker so y'all can see what the, the subject matter tonight. Let me make sure we good here, man. Okay, so anyway. So like I said, I'm, I'm learning on the job, but I'm still wondering, like, how these guys getting these type of dogs? Because, you know, at that time, dogs with size was, 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 was big, was getting big numbers. You know what I mean? And of course, the pockets was coming in. I wasn't into the, I wasn't into the pockets. But like the dogs with size, they were getting big time numbers, big, big bread. So I'm like, man, I, I need to add size to my stuff. I'm like, you know, so I'm, I'm going old school. I'm like, you know, taking the biggest puppies with the biggest puppies and breeding those. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, okay, this is how they doing it, right? You know, this is how they doing it. So fast forward, y'all. Okay, I'm still naive to this 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 pedigree dog thing so i'm breeding my dogs and you know i actually buy a, an outcross for my partner and you know they're so-called you know bigger dogs let's say you know 75 you know uh 85 pound dogs in there you know there might be a, a hundred pound dog in the pedigree you know this is what you know this is what my partner is telling me in in, in his pedigree. So I'm like, okay, I want to breed bigger style dogs at that time, bigger pit bulls, because the ones who had them bigger pit bulls, like the Juan Gotti's and things of that nature, those dogs like that, they was getting, you know, stupid top tier, five, ten thousand dollars a puppy type stuff. And you know, I'm like, man, I want to get that. You know what I mean? Like, really, I was, I was like, I want to get that. So I was making sure I had dogs like that in my you know in my genetic recipe in my pedigree so I, I outcrossed i bought my dog from one of my partners who had dogs like that in the pet um fast forward right i'm breeding that adding that to to my line and you know i i got you know i i i got dogs with a little bit of size but not not the way that i was expecting you know what I mean? I wasn't, I, I didn't get what I expected. So now I'm puzzled, you guys. I'm puzzled. I'm puzzled. So I'm like, you know, I got to go to the source. You know what I mean? I got to go buy dogs from these individuals who, who actually have these dogs with the level of size, right? So I, I did some research and was on YouTube and i reached out to uh old dog i think his, his thing his kennel was called old dog kennels or something like that out there in la and uh he actually had a demonious realm compton uh daughter which is uh west side monster which is uh juan Gotti's son right so i'm i'm to the source right i'm trying mean, I'm, I'm to the source damn near genetically a juan Gotti, right with that demonious realm compton uh daughter that i purchased so i remember i reached out to him and you know i'm green so i'm you know i'm, I'm over there just probably talking his ear off but i just you know i just emailed him i was you know I'm, my name is such and such and such, such, such man uh, i admire the genetics you got i'm trying to build dogs like this i'm serious hit me up if you ever do a breeding like that again because he was just showcasing the puppies and he was saying what they were off of and i saw how close i was only three generations to juan Gotti. You know what I'm saying? And I was always a fan of West Side Monster. So he hits me back. He hits me back. Like, uh, I mean, it, it is, he's like, if you serious, man, I got two. I kept two out of the litter. I'll say this female if you serious. And he's all the way in SoCal. I'm up in North Cal. I'm up in Northern California. He out there in L.A. I'm up there up north near Sacramento, right? So I'm going to hit my wife. I told my wife, my mama, I'm like, I think I'm about to go buy this dog. He said 3,500. 
you know, I'm I'm close to Juan Gotti. I'm always like, oh, you know, she's already like, man, you gonna buy you gonna buy a dog? I'm like, yeah, we're gonna drive to L.A. So I took that, I hit him up like, hey, you, if you're serious about selling, I'll I'll buy it because you know I I wanted that size, I wanted that that genetics. I wanted you know I'm 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 scroll hunting now. You feel me? I'm I'm pedigree hunting. I want that. I want those genetics. Like I want to produce that level of size so I can get that money. So I go down to L.A., meet up with my mans, buy the bitch, spend thirty five hundred, bring her back. You know, boom. So now I'm like, okay, you know, I got the piece. I'm gonna add this to my pit bull line. You know what I mean? Fast forward. Okay, I don't breed her for three years because I'm not in a position to breed her at that time where I was living. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to have puppies and all that type of stuff. So I waited, moved up to the hill where I'm at now. You know what I mean? I got the acreage and all the all the good stuff. Okay. So now it's time for me to breed the bitch. So I breed her to, you know. One of my studs that I got from uh, uh, my partner, one of my outcross studs that I, I bought from my partner, my boy Primo. You know, rest in peace, Primo, man. Superior dog. Superior dog. Um, and so I get, to, I remember I bred, I bred her out. I got two puppies, but they both came out stillborn. You know what I mean? So they didn't survive. And then I tried to breed her again, and I could never get her to take. And then she eventually um, had Palometra. And then I had to put her down. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't get nothing out of that. I didn't get nothing out of that, that, that bitch. So now I'm just like, man, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm depressed about it. I'm kind of burnt out. I'm like, whatever, man. It just, it's not meant to be. And so I was in my little, my little space for a while, my depressed state. And I didn't know really where I was going to be going with my program. And then, like I was telling y'all before, that's when I went on my DNA shopping spree. Okay. And I started, you know, researching and tapped into this, uh, you know, breeder, tapped into that breeder that I was always fans of and, you know, started buying my dogs, my genetics. And at that time, I was still, okay, making sure that I had the pedigree, the paperwork to match what I wanted because you know, that's what I believe that these individuals was doing that were creating these type of dogs. You know, they was really pedigree hunting. And then that's why they were getting these level, of, you know, these top tier type of dogs that we were seeing that were popular. So, I, you know, I, I spend my money, I spend a lot of money, get these dogs. And then I start cooking myself, start cooking myself. I start watching more, you know, YouTube podcasts and dog podcasts and things of that nature. And as I'm watching these podcasts, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that I didn't know that's coming into light about these individuals with these dogs that a lot of us were fans of. And, you know, and people who were close to them were telling, you know, the inside scoop. OK, and I have another individual, you know, which I give much respect to and I'm not going to say his name. but. You know, based off of him and I's brief relationship, and he saw the passion, he heard the passion in my in my conversation. Like, yo, this this, you know, like this man coach is a real dog man. He just don't have a clue yet of how this dog game works. You know, he's coming from the an an, an organic, authentic uh, understanding of the dog game, but it don't work that way. You know what I mean? Like. He saw that I was genuine and I really wanted the math. He understood that I went and paid for the mathematics based off of paperwork. He's seen that. He heard it. And he gave me game. Okay. Him and then also all the, you know, all the different dog channels and stuff because I'm a student of the dog. Okay? I'm a student of dogs. So I'm a student of the game too. You know what I mean? So. As I'm learning from all these different channels that I'm paying attention to, these different dogmen and women that I'm paying attention to, I'm getting direct access to somebody who's been around the game since the essence of it. You know what I mean? Been doing dogs for a long time. And he told me, hey, coach, you know, I hate to burst your bubble, man, but I got to tell you what's really going on in this dog game. He says, the paperwork that you be reading, a lot of it is false. A lot of it is fabricated. OK, for these individuals to get the dogs that they have today that are, let's say, you know, 
you know, next level dogs and, you know, the, the, the bars, the bar raisers. He said they'd be paper hanging. Yeah, I was around it. I was around it. I seen it. Well, onto a matter of fact, I was a part of it. He told me straight up. It's easy. He said nobody was DNA testing. Nobody's asking for DNA tests. So it's easy to hang these papers and create these dogs. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. I hate to burst your bubble, man. So you're chasing these pedigrees that you have, right? You buying pedigree dogs, but they're not really what they are on paperwork. And nine times out of 10, if you've never seen those dogs, how would you know if you was able to recreate that in your genetics if you've never seen them? That's just a scroll of names, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, okay, cool, right? Okay, cool. So, you know, he gave me a reality check, but I, I, I didn't comprehend it until I'm in the field cooking. Now I'm in the field cooking the genetics that I bought, okay? And, you know, for example, when I bought my band dog genetics from Buff Dogs, I remember I was asking her for paperwork, and this is before I got the game on paperwork, right? And I said, you know, you got, you know, do they come with papers? And, you know, and uh, Jackie is her name, right? She was, you know, letting me know how underrated the paperwork is. Like, you know, she was like, you know, yeah, we have paper dogs, but, you know, this is that shit is just like toilet paper. You know what I mean? Like, she just was keeping it real. Like, that shit's extra credit. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, you know, really what it boils down to us, like, we did it for our clients. But for us, you know, it didn't make any sense because it's all about the dogs. Not every dog with those papers are going to be what what you think they are you know what i mean genetically you know what i mean just because they have papers behind them don't mean they're going to produce what's on that paperwork so you know we did it for our clients but you know for the most part we kind of just got away from that we just focus on the dogs that's what she told me i'm like okay cool whatever right you know what i mean I'm, I'm green still i'm learning on the field you know i'm in the field learning because i'm thinking that these these paper you know the paperwork is all is 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 the goal you know feel me i'm thinking that it is what I'm, I'm, you know, I'm studying it, trying to figure out genetically, like, okay, if I do this, take this dog with that dog, this, this family with that family, I'm, I'm really thinking that that's how it works. And, you know, as I'm meeting new, uh, 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 more people, more established breeders who are, or excuse me, have gone through what I'm going through currently or what I went, through, was going through at that time, they're giving me real game, y'all. Okay. I'm just like, okay, okay. So as I'm learning, I'm like, damn, my paperwork ain't really shit. If if these cats was hanging papers anyway, then how could I follow my paperwork to produce a certain type of dog if the papers was fake anyway, right? If the papers really don't matter. So when I did my band dog breeding and I took my bitch, who I know how she's bred because I bred her, okay? So I know how she's bred. I know at least three generations back of the dogs, okay? So I take my production. I know top and bottom, mom and dad, three generations back, all the dogs, seen them, know them, da-da-da. And then I take it to one of the buff dogs, which happens to be Red Bull, which is a Neapolitan Mastiff, German Boxer, American Bulldog, F1, F2, F3, cross, okay? I've never seen Red Bull, okay? But I know that those three breeds are in the dog equally. I know that because, I, you know, that's what was told to me by the breeder. No papers, though, y'all, from that dog, okay? I keep everything except for one. I bless, you know, a, a kennel partner at the time of mine. I blessed him with one. I mean, he's not my kennel partner anymore. But I blessed him with one, gave him one. You know what I mean? It's a gift. Here you go, man. Here you go. Here's some DNA for you, man. Because that's what how I am. But I'm keeping everything else, okay? Because I don't know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get, okay? So I know what my bitch is, and I know what I'm seeing off of three generations. So I'm expecting to see those things genetically in these puppies. I just don't know what I'm gonna get from Red Bull, all right? So as I keep these dogs. And I know the genetics, I'm seeing different things in each one of these dogs. Most people don't keep their whole litter. Most people aren't studying genetic characteristics as you see them. 
Most people just look at papers, don't even know what they're even reading because they've never seen them dogs on the paperwork. Okay. I've seen three generations from the mother's side, the damn side. So I can kind of, you know, look at the puppies as they grow and be like, okay, that looks like this or that looks like that. But then the things that I don't know, I just don't know. Right. Well, maybe he, you know, maybe she got that from her daddy or maybe. That's her daddy's side from her grandfather. Uh, you know, all that, I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue, right? So as I keep the litter, I'm understanding more about what's important, okay? Because, you know, I'm not really, you know, the pedigree is not fully equaling the puppy. It's not, okay? Because I don't know half of the, I don't know half of the, the pedigree from the father's side. It's not, but it's not equal in the puppy. And then also, you know, I'm being told that, you know, you know, paperwork's overrated. People be paper hanging and all these different things, right? I'm told this by reputable dog men and women. So I'm like, all right, whatever, right? So I have like binders of paperwork on dogs okay binders full of dogs pedigrees so i you know i got i got scrolls lots of them okay dogs that passed away dogs i currently have i have scrolls i've studied pedigrees okay and tried to understand the dogs that were in them and and when I produce the dogs, can I see a throwback here, a throwback there? Which side did it come from? Like I've 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 been playing that game for a while, but because I'm trying to produce greater, better, you know what I'm saying? When a dog shows me something I don't see in the pedigree, then you know I'm like, okay, you know, this is just that dog. Maybe I made it better. But the reality of it is, as I was, you know, learning on the job. I'm like, man, what's really true about what I'm reading on the pedigree? What is really true about what I'm reading on the pedigree? Especially if I don't even know what's past three generations. Does it really matter? Yeah, it matters when it comes from, you know, let's say selling the dog for people who want dogs with paperwork. Yeah, it matters. However, from a person like myself who breed performance dogs, it's starting not to matter to me anymore because it's not translating into the puppies. If I know the mom and the dad, that's how far I can take a pedigree. If I know the mom and the dad, the grandmother and the grandfather, that's how far I can take the pedigree. If I know the mom and the dad, the grandmother, the grandfather, the great grandmother, the great grandfather, top and bottom, that's how far I can take the pedigree. Anything below that that I have not seen or has not showed me from somebody else who have seen it and can give me the exact, like, yo, these are the phenotypes, this is the genotype, this is how they act. I can't, I can't credit that to my mathematics of the puppy. I can't credit it, okay? Because the reality of it is, it's probably a lie. It's probably a lie, especially when it comes to performance dogs, especially performance dogs, right? Because if you think about it, back in the day when, you know, nobody was in your yard, only you, and you were breeding dogs to perform at a level and you were looking for that hybrid vigor, whatever that is to you, right? You were taking dog on dog, a dog that you saw that had something that you liked you like, oh, I like that. Whatever that is, whether it can breathe good, whether it has stamina, whether it had a structure you like, whether it had whatever you seen in that dog, you're like, oh, I like that. You look at the dog, I want to breathe to that. I want to breathe to that. You wasn't looking at no paperwork back in the days. I want that dog, I'm going to add that. Now, that dog could be a whole nother breed. It could be a whole nother family of dogs that is the same breed it could be whatever it could be whatever but at the same time they those individuals back in the day was picking dog 
to dog. They are just keeping it simple on that kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Dog, dog. I like that. I see it. I want it. If I breed that, that I see, that I want, to this that I see, that I like, that I want, I should get that. I should get something similar. I should get a combination. That's how they were doing it. Not how you think or how I thought they were doing it. Looking at scrolls, studying scrolls, like, oh, this dog, oh, that dog, oh, this dog. They said this dog is that, that dog. Oh, I need to have that in my dog. Because they said, you know, 20 years ago that this dog was that or 10 years ago this dog was that. Like, really? You think you're going to dig that deep into the pedigree and get that? You really think that? Okay. Now, if you breed dogs, if you've bred them multiple times, you've had multiple litters, and you've seen multiple litters grow up, not just one out of the litter, you've kept litters and watched the whole litter grow. And that's where you're going to get your analysis of if your genetics from that pedigree makes sense. If you knew the dogs in there, that's the only way you can do the numbers, y'all. That's the only way you would be able to do the numbers, the data to make that pedigree make sense on them puppies, multiple, not one puppy, the puppies, okay? Now, I've been able to assess this myself because I've kept litters. Okay, and seeing genetically that each one of them dogs are different genetically, even though they come from the same genetic pool, right? Different. Now, I can't assess everything past three generations, me personally, okay? Now, I can't tell you if I got a throwback from 10 generations. I can't tell you that. If it's not registering on the three generations that I know, I'm going to put it on the dog itself. Well, hey, that came from that dog. That dog is an individual. That trait that I haven't seen, I can't, you know, I can't go on my data from the pedigree and say, okay, that came from grandfather. That came from grandma. That came from mom. I can, if I can't see those genetic phenotypes and genotypes from the, the dogs that I've seen with my own two eyes, then I got to put it on that dog. Okay, I got to put it on that dog. Now. If we want to keep it stupid, excuse me, keep it simple, stupid, excuse me, y'all, okay? Use the KISS method. Now, I assess dogs minus the paperwork. That's what I do now. Even though I got scrolls on top of scrolls on top of scrolls on top of scrolls. ADBA, UKC, AKC, I got scrolls on scrolls on scrolls. I got them. Got them. I don't even look at them. I don't, I, I keep it simple. I keep it simple now. Okay, because I'm a, I'm seasoned in breeding dogs. Hundreds and hundreds of litters I done had. Done seen multiple litters of dogs grow up. Okay. From 2005 until, where are we at, 2024? Multiple litters. Assess dogs itself. Used to look at pedigrees, try to judge pedigrees to the dogs that I'm seeing. You know, kept whole litters to assess the genetics based off the pedigree and all the dogs in the litter. And I'm, I mean, you know, it's it's not it's not adding up genetically from the pedigree because each puppy is its own individual. That genetic pool is so broad. Okay, now my dogs aren't heavily inbred, the ones that I have, so I don't have a tight gene pool. Where it's like, okay, damn, I done, you know, mother, uh, uh, son, you know, sister, brother, mother, son, uncles, uncle, you know, sister, brother, all them inbred, inbred. I don't, I don't have that type of blood, okay? And I would never do my blood like that anyway, you know what I'm saying? Personally, you know, I like some outs. I like, I like the hybrid vigor because I breed performance dogs. I like the hybrid vigor, okay? I like genetics that I want to keep though, so I'm not against inbreeding. However, I do like the outs in there because, you know, that's, a, I'm, I'm, like I said, that's the explosion of genetics. We need that new genetics when we're doing performance dogs. I need that explosion in there in the gene pool because that's what it's supposed to do when you take it out until you're in. But, you know, due to my experience with these dogs, okay, I learned to not 
focus on paperwork when I breed my dogs. Only on experience that it taught me this. I look at the dogs like when I was mentioning to y'all my band dog breeding with my boy Red Bull and my bitch Holy Spirit. And I get AR-15 and I get uh, uh, Silver Bullet. I get Nina 9mm. I get uh, Prima Donna. Okay? All different dogs. They're different. Look different, act different, different. Come from the same mother and father, though. But I get to assess how they act genetically. Now, if I was studying paperwork, let's say I had the scroll on Red Bull and I seen those dogs. I'm sure because every all four of them dogs that I mentioned is different, there will be some blanks in there for me based off the pet, the paperwork. Like I, I, I wouldn't be able to mathematically say, okay, well, why if I know, you know, three generations from the dame, three generations from the uh, sire, but then there's the dogs that's not acting or looking like those three generations that I know, where's it coming from? You know, where's it coming from? Right? I'm putting too much stock in that pedigree, me as a performance dog breeder. I'm putting too much stock in that. Whereas if the dog is meeting my expectations as a breeder, okay, strictly off of performance, structurally, right, mentally, drive wise all those things okay who cares if the dog has paperwork if i bought a dog that didn't have paperwork like for example red bull okay now that doesn't mean that that dog doesn't have a pedigree obviously he came from a line of dogs but he didn't come with paperwork if i buy a dog that didn't come with paperwork but that dog is superior in what I need as a dog genetically. What I see, do I scrap him? Oh, he ain't got no paperwork. I can't use him. He ain't got no papers. I can't use that dog. He don't come from, you know, a long line or whatever. Whatever, you know, gets you excited when you see the paperwork. Champions, purple ribbon, whatever. He don't come from a long line of that. I can't use that dog. But, you know, actually, genetically what you see, phenotypically what you see, that dog is superior. Do you scrap it? Okay. My answer is going to be no, because the people of the past, they weren't scrapping them damn dogs. They was using them and then they was paper hanging. They was using them and paper hanging to appease you people who are naive about how these dogs was made. Right? Because y'all into the paperwork. The breeder is into creating the dog on dog. That dog is good. I like that dog. Oh, that dog. I want what that dog has. Who cares what's behind it? I don't even know. I don't know what's behind it. I can't go back 10, 20 years. But I know what I see. Man, I got some paperwork over here. Man, I got, you know, this dead dog. He, you know, he's was a dope dog and shit. You know, he's dead, though, but I got his paperwork. You know what I mean? Got some puppies and stuff that didn't make it. I still got their paperwork. I'm put, I'm just going to hang it on them. And then people like, you know, that are green to this game of dogs, breeding dogs, you know, they get all excited on the paperwork. It comes from this champion, that champion. Oh, I got to get that dog. Man, that dog might be a piece of shit. But the paperwork says that, oh, man, if, you know, it comes from this and then the third. That doesn't mean that that dog's going to be anything like what it came from. Because you don't know if them dogs, in, you know, in that pedigree is false or not. Fabricated. You don't know that. But this is what happens to us green. Okay, I'm not green anymore. I'm seasoned, y'all. I'm, see, I'm, the, I'm the player coach. I'm seasoned. Based off experience. But before I was green, I was believing in the lies until I started playing in the field myself. And so I, until, I start, until I started playing in the game of breeding dogs myself and seeing that I wasn't creating those dogs that was so-called in the paperwork. That I was spending top tier dollars on because of papers. Like, why am I not getting that? Why am I not getting it? Oh, because they was lying. The dogs in the paperwork aren't really the dogs that they use. 
Oh, you know, oh, how naive am I? Right now, I'm only letting you guys know this because I learned it as I was studying. I was in other people's classrooms studying. OK, there's a lot of bitter people in the dog game that be in their feelings. They be telling on each other. So you start to see people tell. Tell on each other. They even telling themselves, like, yo, I got to tell you the truth, man. Like, you know, shout out to, you know, I'm not going to say no name. Shout out to him. He told me the truth about what he was even doing. Like, bro, this is what we was doing. Y'all didn't know we were doing it, but that's what we were doing. You know what I mean? How else are we going to create dogs like this and like that and like this and uh, how else could we do it? You think we're just breeding this dog to that dog, that family with this family, breeding them? Breed you think that's what's, what's creating these type of dogs that everybody hooping and hollering about? No, that's not how they, that's not how they do it. No, they add something to the recipe. Paper hang it. Like I said, anybody who knows performance dogs know hybrid vigor is your best friend. If you're doing performance dogs, if you know how to do performance dogs right, hybrid vigor is your best friend friend you're not going to inbreed and get hybrid vigor sorry sorry you're not going to have a purebred with hybrid vigor it don't work that way sorry only the naive green ones think that if you in the lab cooking like i cook or like the ones in the past that have created great dogs superior dogs they know they have to go into the out they got to go into their genetic kitchen cabinet and get it out. I got to add a little spice in this motherfucker because right now my mm, it's not kicking the way I want it. I got to add a little spice. And because I want performance, I'm going to add it. I'm not worried about what this man think that I'm doing. I need to see it in the dog. So I'm going to add what I want to add. And trust me when I tell y'all, they was adding whatever they wanted to add. Don't be naive now. Don't be naive. Okay? This is coming from somebody, me. Me! In the field that was buying, spending $10,000 on dogs for pedigrees, thinking that I'm getting those genetics. And coming to find out later on that I was bamboozled. Nigga. Oh, you wonder why you're not seeing what you thought that was in your genetics? Because the motherfuckers are paper hanging. What you see is not what you get. Oh, damn. I, man, I was, man, I thought that's why I paid this much. That's why I paid because, you know, that's what I thought. They sold me on that. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they do. So it goes back to the KISS method. Okay, the KISS method is, the KISS method is, if the dog, right, that you see shows you superior genetic characteristics, shows you it, okay, as you look at it, as you examine it, you study it, and it is showing you like, yo, I like that, I like the drive, I like... I like the intelligence. I love the structure. I love the durability. All those things is just adding up. You know, you know, we just, you know, it's like you, it's like we're going into Columbine and we're recruiting athletes. And that dog is doing all that, man. Fuck what's behind it. Okay? You're going too far now. You're going too far down the rabbit hole of tricks when you're trying to figure out what's behind it. Don't do it to yourself. Keep it simple. Stupid. Kiss method. Keep it simple. Stupid. The dog shows you it. Believe in the dog. Okay? You still don't know what you're going to cook up, but the dog is at least, you know, at least you can say, I know what that dog has. I know what that dog has. I want it. Oh, my God. It's not paper. Let's say it's not paper. It's not paper. Oh, I can't use a dog. Oh, it's not paper. Oh, I can't use a dog. Oh it's, oh, it's not paper. I can't use it. Okay? Shame on you if that's you. Okay? Now, me, the dog guy, I'm going to tell you all the truth about the game, the dog game. 
That's why I'm so excited and so grateful that I'm in to band dogs. Because like I said, I have paper dogs. I breed paper dogs. However, I don't breed them because of the pedigree. I don't. I learned my lesson on that. I'm not getting bamboozled again. I seen that I wasn't creating what was on what was in the pedigree. I seen that my own with my own two eyes as producing dogs after dogs after dogs, litters after litter as the litters. I done seen that I wasn't getting that. And for those of you that think you is really getting that from the past, no, 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 you don't. You don't. Okay, you don't. The dogs are only supposed to get better, or they might get worse. If you're getting something from the past that's exactly the same, then you're not doing something right. It don't happen that way. Too many genetic variations. You're not getting a, 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 a twin from five generations back. It don't work that way. Sorry. Okay? Unless you're just inbreeding it's the same genetics over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, and anybody who knows that about inbreeding, your dog breaks down. Your animal breaks down if you keep inbreeding, inbreeding, inbreeding. It, it, it breaks down. We, you know, if you do that, it breaks down. Anybody who does that a lot, they'll tell you the dog breaks down. You got to throw it out in there. It's going to break down. So you're not getting no 10 year old throwback. Don't, don't be fooled with genetics. And if you're not breeding as a dog man or dog woman to create better than 10 years ago, then why are you breeding these dogs, man? Why are we breeding these dogs, performance dogs, if we're not trying to do how we see, you know, what we live in society, right? Everything, every year is better. Every year is a new model. If we're not breeding our performance dogs to get a newer model, then what the, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing as dog men and dog women? Okay? Living in the past? Nah. Not me. Not me. If I have a dog named AK-47, which I do, okay? I didn't breed him. I bought him, okay? But he was a 50-50 outcross breeding. So, you know, everybody who got a dog off, off that litter got a different dog, okay? Genetically, it's all, like, genetically, he's wide open, okay? A plethora of genes. It's an outcross, okay? It's not a tight, tightly bred dog, okay? Outcross, Okay, so those genes for me is, is valuable because I can do so much. Now, do I know what I'm going to get when I breed them to different bitches? No, I don't. Now, is it my job to make my creations better than him? Yes. Am I going to take him to bitches that have something that will complement what I see in AK? Yes. When I keep litters, do I hope to see that? And then some, yes. Do I want to see the same dog exactly? Do I just want to see just AKs coming out exactly like him? No, I want to see AKs with the variation that I threw in them genetically. I want to see the AK with the other shit in there. I want to see some shit that I didn't even know the AK had because of that plethora of genes that came from his outcross, that hybrid vigor that produced him, freaking nature named AK. I want to see all those genetics. Me, me, I want to see it. I want to see something that I don't see in that dog. That's better. I don't want to see worse though. I don't want to see a digression of genetics. Like, damn, how, how come this dog looks, uh, or this dog has got less drive, or this dog got less bone, or what? I don't want to see that. I want to see greater than, y'all. Greater than, okay? The only way you see that is if you keep a kiss method and you look at the dogs and you, you know, you breed according to what you see. And then voila. Now, pedigree does come in handy when you're trying to sell a dog. Okay? That's really, and we're talking about performance dogs. We're talking about, we're not, I'm not talking about show dogs, so we're over here dealing with performance dogs, over here at band dogs, over here with this band dog talk. We're talking performance dogs. I'm not talking show dogs, walk around the rinks, just look like something. Okay? We're talking about performance dogs. When you're trying to sell a dog, having paperwork will probably get you a couple more dollars. Will probably get you a couple more dollars. Okay? 
When I bred my band dogs, they didn't come with no paperwork. Okay. I sold my band dogs for band dogs for as low as 2000 as much as 3500 without papers. You know which breed of dog is real heavy on paperwork is the game dogs. I bet you they can't get no $3,500 for them crazy paperwork dogs that they got. I bet you they can't. Okay. Some people overseas can probably get it because, you know, they got their own little market. You know, they built their little way. But, you know, the average game dog buyer is not going to spend $3,500 for those pedigreed ass game dogs. They're not. They not, but you know, that pedigree matters to them. You know, they see them dogs from the 90s and the 80s and them pedigrees. Oh man, oh yeah, that's the top tier pedigree. Man, I need 3,500. What, 3,500? Oh man, I ain't got that, man. You can know, all you got it for 500? What about 1,000? The cheapest I sold my band dogs for was 2,000. That was when I first put them on the market. Two years ago, two bands. Give me two about two thousand. No questions asked, though. No questions asked. No papers, though. No papers, though. No questions asked. You know why it was no no questions? Because they looked at the dogs. They looked at the parents. So, so th these puppies came from that dog and that dog. Yeah. All right. Cool. How much you want? Two bands. Cool. Done. Done. Okay. Those puppies came from this dog and that. Yeah. I need three thousand. Done. Done. No papers. No papers. And the dogs themselves are living up to the parents. Not the paperwork. The parents. What the individual saw in the parents, the puppies are living up to that. Phenotypically, genotypically. Now, the consumer of mine's didn't get to see the genotype of the parents because they don't own the parents. They just saw the phenotype. That's all they saw. However, what they seen is what they got. They got a mix of that and they're happy with it. Okay. Uh, 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 genotypically, you know, you know, they're learning their dog, right? Just like I've learned the parents. They're learning that and, you know, no complaints. No complaints. So did paperwork help me sell my dogs for the money that I want? No, I didn't have no paperwork. The dogs, the dogs themselves sold my dogs. Just like how I cooked them up in my lab. I cooked them up based off of the dogs, not the paperwork. Even though the American Bulldog bitch that I use, her name is Tigress, she come fully papered. I don't know all them damn American Bulldogs in her, in her paperwork, but I got it. I got her scroll. I got her scroll. I don't know not one of them dogs other than the mom and the dad, y'all. I never, I didn't, I didn't breed the family of dogs that she come from. I don't know them. I got a scroll with all of them in there, though. Okay. Did my cook up, was me cooking her up into, into AR-15 based off of her pedigree? No. Not at all, y'all. You know who I based it off of? Her and her mom and her dad. You know why? Because I know who she is. I own her. I watched her grow up. I seen her demeanor. I seen how she acts like a pit bull, even though she looks like a bulldog. I know that bitch can breathe. Like, you know what I mean? I've had other American bulldogs die on me because they can't breathe. See, I, I mean, I'm experiencing this dog shit. I'm experienced. Okay? I seen that she can breathe. I see that she acts like a pit bull. She acts just like my pit bulls, man. But she got that, you know, she's built like a bulldog. But she acts just like a ripped up, muscled up, all the shit. Stamina, all the shit. Wants to smoke, all that. I'm like, oh, I like that. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the dog. Oh, I like that. I look at her daddy. Her daddy died. Guess what? How, guess how her daddy died? He stroke. But he you know he got that. He had that look. That's why I wanted to buy. I wanted that phenotype. He had the phenotype TKO recipes TKO. Okay, but he died of a heat stroke. Tigress is not like her daddy though. But guess what? She got her daddy in the DNA. So guess what? I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get the daddy, but can breathe like Tigress. You see what I'm saying? See, mathematically, I'm using the dogs that I know. I'm not looking at the pedigree because I can't go that far back. I know who AR-15 is. I know who his mother is. I never met his daddy. Okay? I know AR-15 is really with the shits. All the stuff, I'm like, I'm, I'm keeping it simple. I love the structure of AR-15, the muscle, all the stuff. 
All the stuff he brings to the table, I love because I'm looking at AR-15. I know his mother. His mother's a killer. All the stuff that she brings, durable, all the shit. I can see it. Structure, everything. Muscle, everything. Stamina, everything. Mathematically, I cook it up. That's my mathematics in the lab. Okay? Not pedigree. Holy Spirit, I seen her. I know her. I know what she got. AR-15, I see him. I know him. I know what he got. Tigress, I see her. I know. Boom. I should get this. Bam. I don't know what I'm going to get, but I should get it. Boom. I get puppies. Pow. Puppies look amazing. People see the puppies. Pow. Oh, wow. Those look dope, coach. Oh, man. Look, wow, wow. How much you want? I need two bands, y'all. Those come with papers? No, they band dolls. They don't come with no papers. I need two bands, though. Okay, cool, coach. Done. 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 And it's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. Don't get caught up in the paperwork. Don't do it. If you want to do it, that's your choice. But, you know, at least you're getting it from me. Somebody who's really in here cooking. Next level dogs. Somebody who really spent top tier dollar off a of pedigree for puppies. Top tier dollar. I don't know how many of y'all spent 10 grand for a dog. I don't know how many of y'all who spent 12 grand for a dog. I don't know how many of y'all have spent 15000 for a dog, a puppy. I don't know how many of y'all have done it, but I have. I have. I don't know how many of y'all that six figures into buying dogs. I don't know how many of y'all that are, but I am. When you hear the dog guy say, got DNA, I do. I ain't capping. I really went on a DNA, a dog canine DNA shopping spree. I really did that. I really went and freaking bought buff dogs DNA. Went in a lab, shook them off they shit with the money though. With the money. Not the not the not the talk. Like everybody else, mostly in this dog and they be running their gums. That's all they do. Uh, talk like they doing something, but when it's time to spend that bread, they ain't got it. The dog guy came with the bread, talked them off the DNA. Okay, that's the only reason why I got Red Bull straws from Buff Dogs. Nobody got Red Bull straws. Not even when Red Bull was in his prime, Joe wouldn't sell it because that's his foundation. That's his, you know, that's his recipe. He ain't giving that up. He didn't even want to give it to me. I told y'all about that. Previous episodes, we talked about that with the Buff Dog shit. He didn't even want to give it to me, y'all. Okay, my rapport with his wife and my money. Shook him off of it. He had six straws that he was just saving because you know that was you know that's his memory. That's his that you know what I mean that that is a, it's a memory. Like you know what I'm out the dog game, but you know this dog done made me so much money. I done built all kind of dogs off this dog. This is my shit. Never gave it nobody. I'm keeping these six straws until I die. My my kids can do whatever they want to do it, and nobody getting them. That's how he felt about them Red Bull straws. Okay, until. The coach came through and finessed them off it with the bands, with the money, with the bread. Had great conversation, you know what I mean? Because I'm in the fields. I had great conversation all day long. You know, he was hearing it. He was hearing it. He, you know what I mean? His wife had me on speaker. He was hearing my passion. He was hearing all the stuff that was him before he was retired. He's like, man, you know what I mean? I like what he's talking about. But no, 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 no. No, can't get a Red Bull. Nah, nah, because I know what I did with them. I know if you smart with the dogs, but it seems like you are, ah, I can't have nobody else do the same thing I did. I put the legacy off them buff dogs, man, off a of Red Bull. I did that. You know, this is what he thinking. Okay, but guess what? My passion was backed up with money. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't resist that money, though, at the end of the day. So he shook off for of three of them. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. He said, thank you, too. I said, thank you. Now, you know, got DNA, I do. Now I'm over here cooking. I'm cooking. I'm cooking. I'm creating dogs. You know, I'm learning on the job that these pedigrees don't matter. The dogs matter. So it goes back to the question. Can a great performance dog be valuable to your program without papers? My answer is going to be yes. Not off of speculation, not off of, you know, this is what I think. No, this is what I know. 
This is what I know. Based off of the cooks, like the cookups that I've done over the years, many years of breeding dogs, it's always the dogs. It ain't the pedigree. It's always the dogs. When I keep whole litters and I see every dog is different, it's the dogs. It's not the pedigree. It's the dogs. The pedigree couldn't tell me that every one of them damn dogs was going to be the way they are. The pedigree couldn't tell me. The mathematics of me studying that pedigree couldn't tell me that each one of them puppies that came off that breeding was going to be what they were. None. None. Now watch this. I'm going to give y'all a flip to that. If you inbreed a dog, then guess what? You know what I mean? You're going to, you know, you keep inbreeding, you're going to damn near get the same, 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 same. You're going to get the same. It's not going to be 100% the same, but you're going to get a lot of the same, give or take things that you lose from inbreeding too tight. Okay? But see, this is not show dog talk that we talk. We're talking band dog talk. We're talking performance dog talk. Too much inbreeding is not a good thing with performance dogs. It's not. It's not a good thing. Don't be afraid to open up your genetic palate. As long as you choose the right dogs that's similar in performance, but, you know, add something that you lack. Maybe come from different families of dogs, but similar, but add something that you lack. Cook them up over the inbreeding. Cook them up over the inbreeding. Okay? And then when you finally got what you like from that production that has a plethora of genetics, from taking them different dogs that's similar genetically, but that's different family, but a wide palette of genetics, then inbreed those, though. Inbreed those. Because you got a long way before that shit starts to break down. You done added so many different, however, like genetic characteristics, different family, different styles, but they're similar in performance. So that hybrid vigor should just boom, boom. I mean, atomic bomb. And then you take the best dogs out of those because you keep it simple. We're not looking at no pedigree. The best dogs out of those, you keep, keep, keep. Oh, this is the best dog. This is the best dog. I love that. And then you breed them together. Breed them together. Brother, sister, whatever. Breed them together. Bam. Oh, shit. I got some more amazing stuff. Breed them together. Pow. Oh, I got some more. Until that stuff starts to break down. Then it starts to break down. Then, you know, we, we do what we've been doing. We go ahead and throw the out up in there. Something similar. Similar that, you know, the things that we've seen that we're losing, add that to it. But make sure the dog come from, a, you know, a, a different genetic pool, but similar to what you already got so that you can create that explosion again. Okay. Has nothing to do with the pedigree, though. Has something to do with the dog that you see, y'all. Has something to do with the dog that you see. Do not get caught up in pedigrees, paperwork. That's a sales pitch. If you're a breeder, it don't matter. If you're a breeder, okay? Keep all the puppies and tell me if it matters. Do it like you're supposed to do it. Do a breeding, keep everything, and, you know, assess them all till, till about three years old. Keep them to about three years old and assess every dog and see how much that paperwork you're going to be like, oh, I mean, I throw this shit in the trash. Study every dog based off of the, at least the dogs that you know. Don't, 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 don't take yourself back in time on dogs you ain't never seen before. Don't do that to yourself. You're lying to yourself. Okay? Don't lie to yourself on dogs you don't know. Base them off the dogs you know and study every one of them damn dogs out there later and see how you be bamboozled. You know, you, you scratching your head like, Damn, why is this dog not like, you know, like you're going to be like that. You're like, what? What the? Why is this dog slow? Why is this dog this? Why Why is this dog not? Like you're going to be scratching your, your head. I promise you, you will. Okay. But you know what? Most of these dog men and women that's in this game ain't doing that. They're not keeping whole litters. They're not really analyzing and grading dogs. They're picking puppies. 
Oh, this puppy's going to be the one. Oh, that puppy. They're assessing dogs off of a puppy, off a child. How are you going to assess a dog off a damn child? How are you going to assess your kid at, at a toddler or at 10 years old? How are you going to assess your kid at that? There's a lot of maturing that that child has to do before you can really grade it. Right? Same thing with your dogs. That's why you got to keep everything if you want to get some real analysis on your genetics. One puppy is not going to tell you. One puppy is not going to tell you that, you know what, that breeding between that mom and dad was superior. Or that breeding between that mom and dad didn't work. One puppy ain't going to tell you that. The whole litter you have to grade. If you really want to know what you got genetically. And like I said, until you do that, you know, you're going to be naive thinking that your paperwork is going to, you know, give you the dogs that you're looking for. You're going to be naive because you ain't, you know, you ain't, you ain't versed in this. You ain't vetted in dog breeding and producing dogs. Right. You don't have enough analysis, no enough data on the dogs that you produce. OK, I did a breeding. That. Because I was so excited about. I offered. You know, I let the public get a chance to get a piece of it. That was my Roman and prima donna breeding. I let the public get a chance. You know, I did the pre, pre-advertising before the breeding. And I had a lot of people wolfing, because that's what people do. They always do it. <laughs> Selling wolf tickets, y'all. It's the world we live in, talking. Coach, coach, oh, I need that, I need that. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. All right, cool, man. Deposits. So, had a litter. I get it. You know, I think I got four girls, three boys. One of the girls didn't make it. So, three girls, three boys. You know, had the majority of them verbally sold. I was going to keep probably like two or three. But, I, you know, two at least. But as they were growing up and people was not giving me their deposits, I'm like, there's no way I can give this litter away to nobody. No fucking way. I don't do that. I don't take, you know, prototypes like this and give them to the public. Why would I give them that level of genetics? Now, to those who did act on it, salute to all y'all. And there's only two that acted on it, two. So salute to you, two, that wasn't woofing and took advantage of me pre-announcing it and putting y'all money where y'all mouth is when that litter dropped okay all the other ones they not getting they're not for sale i didn't even advertise that litter i didn't even advertise it but the two that put their money up they bless because they got some good genetics okay one is in peru by the way <laughs> one is in peru thirty five hundred dollars y'all in peru a band dog with no papers overseas okay he know what it is he a real dog man you know what I mean? The real dog man know what time it is. Just like I knew what it was when I went over there and I was hollering at uh, buff dogs and I was shaking them down with my money. I wanted the genetics. I wanted the genetics. I came with my money. That's how I got Red Tiger and his brother. That's how I got all them semen from them. Because I came with my money. That's how my man got my one of my best. Actually, he got the best bitch out of that litter. Okay? And that was just random. That just happened that just... I would say the luck of his pick, he picked the best bitch. So that represents me. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad it went over there. He paid what I wanted, and it went overseas, and I know he going to do something with it. I already know he a real dog, man. he got dogs. He a real dog, man. He knew what he was getting. That's why he paid it. But anyway, what I'm saying to y'all is, I, I, just, I was like, no, I'm not going to market this litter. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping them. And I am. I'm keeping the rest of them. Ain't nobody getting them. Okay? Because I need to assess the genetics. I know prima donna. I don't know Roman. I know what he looked like, but I never owned him. How could I give those genetics away off of picking off of a puppy? How? How could I know picking a puppy? I don't, I'm not going to know if picking up an eight week old puppy. I don't care how rambunctious he is. I don't care how cool his structure is. I don't know. So they, they stay with me. 
They stay with me. So I can do my due diligence as a breeder to assess the genetics. Because I know damn well that each one of them puppies are going to be different. Phenotypically, genotypically, right? Mentally, drive-wise, structure-wise, functional-wise, they're going to be different because of the genes. Even though I took an uncle to a, to a niece, the niece was an outcross breeding. So genetically, I'm going to get something different. Okay, it's not an inbreeding, it's a line bred dog. Even though I took the uncle to his niece. I took the uncle to his brother's daughter. That came, that was produced from an outcross. So I have to keep them, right? To assess genetically if what I produce is going to be what I think it's going to be, right? Based off of just the dogs, not the pedigree. I know the breeds, but I don't know the dogs, right? I know the breeds of Roman. Same breeds as his brother, Red Bull. Neapolitan Mastiff, German Boxer, American Bulldog. One, two, three. I don't know the Neapolitan Mastiff family of dogs they use. I don't know none of them dogs in the pedigree. They use a full-blooded Neapolitan Mastiff, whatever they use. I don't know that. I don't know the German Boxer they use. Don't know it. Okay. I don't know the American Bulldog they use as far as the pedigree. I don't know it. I just know what I purchase, which is semen that consists of them three breeds of dogs. So now I need to assess what those genetics are. Not based off of paperwork, but based off of the dogs. Y'all understand that? So if I just was like, oh, if it ain't paper, man, I can't breed it. If I don't know all the paper dogs from each breed of dog, I don't, I don't see the paper, I can't use it. If I'm that way, then guess what? I mean, shit, I'm never going to create the next level dog. Because nine times out of ten, it's lies anyway. It's lies at least five generations back after that's probably lies. Maybe even closer. But, uh, you know, five and below is probably some lies in there. I, I, I guarantee you some lies in there. Especially if we're talking performance dogs. Not show dogs performance dogs because i know that if they were doing what real performance dog breeders were doing back in those days they was trying to produce hybrid vigor period if they lacked something they wasn't going to the homeboy who had the same breed they wasn't going over here and trying to no 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 if they lack something and they know how to breed they was adding whatever they chose to add they do the breeding, boom. They do an F1 breeding if they wanted to, boom. They take the puppy that looks the most like the, like the purebred, and they throw that in there. They throw that back up into the pure shit. That's how they do it. Breed that shit, boom. Get the best performing dog that looks the way they want, okay? Boom, now they fucking fooled the public. Public don't even have a clue that they threw that out up in there. They don't even have a clue. Because when they did that F1, they took the puppy that looked the most phenotypically. Not acted the way they wanted, just looked the most phenotypically. And then they threw that because they knew genetically that those genes is in that puppy. Even though that puppy might not show the performance, they knew that the genes was in there because they did F1. Then they take that puppy and they throw it into the dog already that got the performance that they want. And it looks that they want, they breed that, then they take the best one out of that one. That's how they do it. Fooled you. Fooled you, huh? You would never know that, huh? But guess what? That breeder achieved his goal or her goal. Okay? Was it the pedigree that made him do that? Was it the paperwork that made him do that? No, it was performance that made him do that. It was performance. It was a dog genetically that they saw that made him do that, not a scroll. So I'm doing this, I'm speaking on this to you guys so that y'all, you know, if you guys are really in tune with your craft and dogs, do you with your dogs. Don't listen to the hype. Don't buy into the hype. I bought into the hype. I gave y'all my storyline. I bought into it. I believe these lion ass breeders. I believed them. 
I sure did. And they got my money because I believed them. <laughs> they got my bread. Then when I started cooking and I wasn't producing like that, I'm like, hey, there's something wrong. Something is not right. I'm not stupid. I'm not a dummy. I'm smart. I study. Oh, well, oh, oh, we got the YouTube. Oh, these motherfuckers is talking now. They talking. They snitching. They pillow talking. Oh, what? What? That's what they was doing all along. I was believing, but uh, they telling on each other. Oh, man. Oh, man. I got bamboozled. No wonder I'm behind. No wonder I'm behind in my breeding program. I'm not behind anymore, y'all. I'm not behind anymore, but I was behind before I caught wind of what they were really doing. Okay. Especially them game dog breeders. The OGs, not these new booties, not the new booty ones. We talking about the ones from the 80s and the 70s. Not, not the new booty ones, though. The ones in the 80s and the 70s, the OGs of this game dog shit, okay? They was doing that. They wasn't worried about paperwork. They was breeding dogs on dogs. They was taking dogs that were dogs and breeding them together. That's what they was doing. You perform the way I want it, I'm breeding it. Period. I don't care what's, on, what's behind your scroll. Who cares? Hey, man, uh, can you tell me what, you know, Who's the, who's the daddy, the mom, and the granddad? They wasn't asking that. They was keeping it simple, stupid. They was on that kiss method. I promise you, they were. Okay? And they were getting them type of dogs, too, because they kept it simple. They wasn't looking at scrolls. They weren't. You can believe it now if you want to. You know why you might believe it now? Because you don't cook dogs up. You don't keep whole litters. You don't have the data. That's why you might believe it. Start cooking up dogs and see what happens. Start keeping whole litters and get depressed when them litters don't turn out what that pedigree told you they was going to turn out. Get depressed. Calculate how much money you spent buying that dog with that pedigree. And seeing that, like, I can't produce this. I'm not producing them dogs. Why? Why? You're going to say that. Why? Then you get hip and you talk to somebody like myself or you talk to the OGs and people of the game that, you know, tell you the truth about how it's really, you know, how it goes down. And then you're like, damn, man, I'm so behind. Yeah, you're so behind. Yeah, you are because you're naive to believe the hype, the lies of these dog breeders who don't want you to have the formula who don't want you to get ahead of them. So they tell you the sales pitch that if the dogs ain't paper like this, they ain't shit. They tell you that sales pitch because they know you're not, you, you know, you're, they just know you're gullible. They know you're not in the lab to find out, right? They know that it's over your head. Even if you start to breed those and, you know, you might think on the surface that your dog is cool because you're so bought into the paperwork. Versus the dog. Right? And like I said, if you're like me and you breed performance dogs and you see dogs, I have multiple dogs. Y'all know I do. Multiple. Different breeds, different families, different phenotypes, different... And I see dogs. I see performance. I see intelligence. I see non-intelligence. I see gameness. I see it all. Durability. I see it all in different dogs. And because of this, I'm able to assess the dog. Forget all the scrolls that I have. I have a lot of scrolls. I don't even look at them. They're just, they're just there. They collect dust. I haven't even looked at them anymore. I don't look at them. There's, 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 I got just stacks of them. Scrolls. ADBA, UKC, all kind of dogs. I don't look at them shits. When I cook up a dog, I'm not looking at a pedigree. Not anymore. That shit's irrelevant to me. That's a sales pitch. Oh, the dog has papers. Here you go. Hey, does, hey, coach, does your dog have papers? Yeah, I got papers. I don't give a fuck about them papers. I know how they were bred. 
However, I don't care about the papers. I know at least three generations back from the dogs that I know, I do at least know that, okay? So I can assess based off of the three generations that I know of the dogs that I'm going to get something of that in the genetic pool. That's all. That's how I keep it simple. If I know the three generations of the dogs that are there, I know them phenotypically and genotypically, top and bottom, meaning Dame and Sire. I keep it simple on that. I don't go any further than that. I'm not Michael J. Fox going back in time on pedigrees. Because they're all lies anyway. If I if I got a dog, like I told y'all, if I got a dog in front of me, just the dog itself, I don't even know the mom, the dad, the if the dog is, is exceptional performance-wise, and it matches what I want genetically in the female or male, whichever one I'm breeding, it matches it, but it brings something extra to the table. I'm running those. I'm running that. I'm running it. Chris Brown, we running it. That's me. That's me. Okay? And that's why you guys are going to see, okay, especially these next, you know, I would say this next year or two, you're going to see some exceptional dogs, man, that I've done cooked up, man. I'm looking forward to showing you them AK, them XL Pitbull Dracos this summer. You know what I mean? But, they, but they're going to be about one and a half, almost two years old. They're about one and a half years old. I mean, they still babies. You know, that's when I showcased AK at one and a half. Okay. Wait till y'all see them. Okay. My cook up, though. My cook up. Not no fucking pedigree cook up. Dog on dog cook up. AK to the bitches that I kept. My bitches that I produced. Holy Spirit, Africa, Tiny. Wait till you see them damn dogs, man. Okay, superstars, watch, just watch. Okay, okay, that's another reason why I'm also holding back on doing AK with the Kangal, man, because I know them going to be exceptional dogs. I already know, I just know it. Okay, I've never owned a Kangal before, never heard about them, never owned one, got one though, I got one in the flesh. I got one. Owning the Kangal, I mean, totally different dog. I mean, you, you, I mean, you probably, you know, you you if you never own one, you couldn't understand the temperament of a of a Kangal. Okay, I do though. Don't act like a pit bull. Don't act like probably none of, no other dog you probably ever. If if, if, if the Kangal don't even act like what you think it act like, that dog is so loving and sweet. Real talk. Loving. I got her paired up with my pit bull. Okay. She's so delicate with the pit bull. I'm learning the Kangal. I'm seeing why it's a guardian breed. I'm seeing it because I'm seeing how she's delicate. Even when playing rough, she knows her power to the pit bull. She knows it. She knows that she can put a bite pressure down and kill that bitch. She knows that she's bigger than the pit bull bitch. Even though the pit bull, you know how pit bulls are, they rah, rah, rah. And, you know, she get rah, rah, rah with the Kangal, but the Kangal is so intelligent mentally knowing that, you know what, you're not a threat to me. So I'm going to play with you, but I ain't going to hurt you. I see, I'm seeing it. I'm like, oh, that, I can see why this is a guardian breed. However, Anything, anything outside of the yard. Because I live in the country. I live in the woods. We got black bears. We got mountain lions. We got bobcats. We got all the shit out here. She on anything. She's on it. She's on anything and everything. That's not the family. That's not the pack of dogs. She on it. On it. The bark of them kangals is... I mean, man, the bark, you, you probably never heard a bark like that. Deep, loud, ferocious bark. 
I can see why, you know, a wolf might be a, you know, a little bit cautious of fucking with a Kangal. She's only going to be two. She's going to be turning two. She's still a puppy, but I'm seeing it. I'm seeing what I can possibly, like, I, I'm seeing what I'm going to get. Like, oh, I like that. I like how how she's in tune with the, the, the flock, whether it be my wife, whether it be me, whether it be the pack of dogs that she is, she understands that that is the flock. However, she protecting the flock, though. She on everything else, though. She on everything else, man. That bitch is on it. She's on it. Now, genetically, right? I'm learning. I don't need to see her scroll to know what I'm going to possibly get. Possible. It's possible. I'm looking at her like, okay, okay, now I'm getting so, okay, so this ain't going to be no, uh, no sickum dog. If I breed her to AK, I'm not getting no sickum dog. Okay. This ain't going to be like a Malinois. No, this ain't, that's, that's not that type. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? She, she's a, she's a thinker. She's not an attacker. Okay. Kangal is a killer. That dog is a killer. Not an attacker. You know, she's on top of, you know, a guardian breed. I'm, I'm learning it. I'm learning it, y'all. But the scroll is not teaching me that. The paperwork that she came with is not teaching me what she is as a Kangal. What she could possibly provide in that genetic makeup cookup that I'm going to do with her and AK. The, the scroll ain't going to tell me that. You think I'm going to sell those puppies and try to get them papered so I can sell them? No, I'm, I'm going to do them just like my band dogs. No papers, but I guarantee I'll get top tier dollar for those damn dogs. I guarantee it. I guarantee I'll get more than them game dog pit bulls. I guarantee it. I guarantee I'll get more than them. You can have the best pedigree out the game. I guarantee I'll get more with, Kang, with uh, AK and that Kangal bitch. So back to the question, right? Can a great performance dog be more valuable to your program without papers? Yes, it can. The key word is that the dog has to be great though. The dog has to be great. Or the potential of the dog has to be great based off of the parents. Based off of the parents, not the grandparents, not the great grandparents, but the parents. If the parents have great potential in their genetics, phenotypically and genotypically, then the offspring's probability of having those same genetics are great. It's not guaranteed. However, they're great. So you can ask a certain amount of money value wise for those puppies based off of what the people see in the parents period period so please you guys don't get caught up in the scrolls don't get caught up in the paperwork okay i'm not downplaying it but I'm not putting it in the, in the forefront either. It does not trump the dog itself, okay? You give me a good scroll and a great dog, I'm taking the great dog. I'm taking the great dog. Fuck that fucking scroll. You can have that damn paperwork. But it's got this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. And look at this dog. I don't give a, I don't give a, look at that dog though. I know what I can do with what I see. I know what I can do. With what I see, because I know how to match that with something that's going to complement it. I'm going to match it with something that's going to complement it. When I let AK play with Snow White, the Kangal, she's still a puppy, man. AK, you know, he's feeling himself. He's going to be four this year, okay? He's a young man now. He's not a puppy, but she's a puppy. When I see them play, and I see AK being who he is, you know, he ain't phased by not a dog. Not one dog phases that, phases AK. 
he don't get agitated. He don't get ruffled because he knows in it, like he knows certain dogs have that or like they know, like, you know, what? if I put an energy on you that I don't want to put on you because you're not really phasing me, I know you're not a threat, then I'm going to it's going to be all bad. Like that's a confidence in a dog that I, I've, I see in AK. And I'm grateful. I always tell you all that. I'm grateful that he don't he's not like Shaka in them. Shaka going to put it on you first. Shaka is offensive. AK is chill. OK, but when I see him with Snow White and I see her athleticism. For her being as big as she is, that bitch is agile, fast, athletic, all the shit. It's amazing to me because this is my first time dealing with that dog, that Kangol. I'm like, oh, look at that athleticism she got. Oh, look at the athleticism AK got. Oh, look at AK's temperament. Ooh, look at Snow White's temperament. You know, I'm 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 watching what possibilities that I'm gonna have when I produce these puppies. Okay, I have AK offspring. Okay, I have offspring that are like uh, Shaka, that are AKs. Okay, offensive, right? Because they're related, right? Because I bred AK to. You know, Shaka sisters, so they're related. So I'm seeing the 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 offensive AK, okay. Which of course I knew I was going to cook that up. However, I'm grateful that AK is not offensive. I can deal with his offspring being offensive because I cooked that up, but I don't think I could deal with AK being that way. He's just too much of a freak. And what I mean by freak, genetically, his abilities is beyond what you would think. Genetically, okay? His speed, reflexes, strength, jaw power, dur his durability, all that is beyond this like bionic dog. And in his mind, he don't even want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, he don't really necessarily know the damage because he doesn't turn that on. He doesn't turn that on. But I do. I see it. I see it when I test him. I see it when we train and we work out. Right? I see how I have to make sure I've got to be, you know, I got to wash my hands when I when I give him his bone and stuff. I or I take something out, I can't take it out of his mouth. I use the brake stick. He, the, you ain't man. You gonna you gonna bend? You gonna? I got a metal brake stick. Bent it. Bent it. Trying to get his little. Uh, I got like a like back in the day. I was using the uh, flirt pole with him. I don't use that no more. I can never get it. Uh, I have to give it to him and let. And eventually, he, when he gets tired of it, he'll let it go. I can't take it out of his mouth. I used to. I have a metal break stick it's a metal one i bought okay and bent it because he's not prying you know if you don't he's not he's not letting it go that's how much jaw power he got he ain't letting it go he don't i don't care if you twist it up in his gums he ain't letting that shit go okay so i know genetically what i got in ak i'm learning about this kangal y'all it has nothing to do with pedigree has everything to do with the dogs that's in front of me, okay? I had to learn that, though, y'all. I could go back and be like, oh, I'm going to give me a whole bunch of gunners, right? Because that's AK's dad, right? I'm going to give me a whole bunch of spades or whatever behind them dogs, right? I could stroke my little pee, -pee about it, right? Oh, let me roll on my little pee, -pee about these dogs I'm going to get. Nah, I don't do that. Nope. Nope. No, I don't do that. I let the productions tell me what I'm going to get. I'm going to let the dogs that I see, AK and the, and the mother, whoever I'm breeding, tell me what I'm going to get. I'm not going to let you know their parents and grandparents tell me what I'm going to get. If I'm able to get that, wow, I got a grandfather. Wow, I got the grandmother. Wow. Other than that, I don't get caught up in that. I'm trying to create better. 
better is what I'm trying to create. So I just want y'all to understand again that you don't have to get caught up in having dogs in your program that are papered up. If you want to sell dogs for more money, it does help. It does. However, if your dogs that you're cooking up are them type of dogs, you can sell them without papers for good money. I'm proof of that. Okay, I'm proof of that. I sell dogs with paper, like with paperwork for good money, and dogs without paperwork with good money. Like real talk. Real talk. And if you're into creating your own dogs like we are here in the band dog community, who cares if the dogs are papered up, right? Because it's about the dogs. We're here to create performance dogs and papers have nothing to do with the performance of the dog. Papers have nothing to do with performance of the dogs. Don't get it twisted, y'all. Don't get it twisted. Now, you can go about it your own way. This is just the dog guy speaking to y'all, man. This is just the coach talking to y'all. Y'all can do whatever y'all mean. You, you have your own choice as a dog man or dog woman to go about your program your own way. If you want to, you know, base your, you know, mathematical equation genetically off of pedigree, do it. You might be successful off those, you know, off the pedigree mathematics. You might be. Not to say that you won't be. Okay? I can only speak... From my experience, okay, and the best way I've learned is to keep it simple, stupid, and to look at the dogs, plural, male and female, in front of you. Breed the male and the female in front of you. And if that male has no paperwork, but you need those genetics, hey. If you got a paper hang, paper hang that shit. You know why? You know why I say that? Because they do it, they did it to us. They did it to me. They probably did it to you. Paper hang that mug. As long as you hey, as long as you create the dog that you want, paper hang it. If you're trying to get that money, because you know, hey, they're only buying my dogs because of the paperwork. Paper hang. That's what they're doing. Paper hang. If that's how you make your money off your dogs, then paperwork, if that's what you want to do, okay? Me, I don't have to paper hang. I don't have to because I breed dog with dog. It just so happened some of the dogs that I'm breeding comes with paperwork, which I don't even give a fuck about personally, but they come with it. So I can, you know, I, whatever, right? Because I told you, I got, I got scrolls of that shit. Whole bunch of papers, lots of them. ADBA and UKC, A A K A B K C, all the shit, AKC. So I can, you know, hey, you want paperwork with the dog? Cool. I got some. I got dogs with paperwork. However, when it comes to my band dog program, huh? I don't need paperwork. Even though some of the dogs that I am breeding have papers that I'm using in my band dog program. I don't I just don't look at the paperwork when I'm breeding. I don't. I just look at the dog. Period. The dog, that dog, this dog, uh, look, genetics. Uh, uh, I like that. Uh, uh, cook it up. Cook it up. Don't know what I'm gonna get. Cool. Keep the whole litter. Keep the whole litter. Assess it. Oh, now I know what I got. Now I know what I got. Now if I cook it up again, I got an idea what I'm gonna get. Cause I got everything. I assessed all the genetics, kept the whole litter. You know what I mean? My probability is higher. Based off the numbers, not off the pet, not off the pedigree though, off the dogs, off the dogs, y'all. Keep it simple, y'all. Kiss method, keep it simple, stupid. Hey, don't blow smoke up your ass and getting all on this pedigree hype. Don't do it to yourself. Not on performance dogs. Don't do it. You breed show dogs. Do what you want to do with them show dogs. Okay, that's how you get your money on show dogs. Cool. Cool. 
If, if the only way you can sell your dogs are if having pretty pedigrees, do it. That's you know that's that's your choice business wise. Do it. That's you. Okay. Now, if you want to create the best performance dogs in the world, match dog on dogs, dogs to dogs. That's how you. That's how you breed the best performance dogs. Not pedigree, dog to dog. As simple as that. That's how you breed the best performance dogs. That's how you have those ones that be wowing people. And they're like, oh, my God, how did you get that? Oh, my God. And then, you know, if you are one of them hype breeders, man, you're going to lie to them. Oh, man, it's the genetics and the pedigree. You're going to lie. Because they don't want you to know how they did it. <laughs> like, that's how it is. I told you all that. I already mentioned it. That's how they get you. They throw that secret sauce in there, create that freak, that freak that everybody wants, and you wonder why you can't produce it. That's why. They didn't tell you the secret sauce to it. Only they know the secret sauce. That's why they can keep producing it and you can't. And guess what? When you can't, you keep buying from them so that you can finally produce it. So they done made, you know, I mean, whatever, how many puppies they sold you until you finally got the sauce. Now you're producing it. But they're not going to tell you how they made the sauce. They're just going to sell you the sauce. They're going to sell you the sauce. Now with performance, it's all off of how the dogs perform, not how they look. We, we, we breed performance dogs. Now if you want to make the money on performance dogs, they have to perform and look good in today's day. They have to both, they have to, you know, you have to have both to make the money now in our day. In 2024 and, and, and beyond, your dog has to look good and perform good. It just can't perform good and look like whatever, right? Those days is done. Okay, the consumer want a nice looking sports car, right? They want a nice looking sporting dog. It's not just, it's a sporting dog and it looks okay. They don't, they don't want that. They want people oohing and on and wow when when they see that dog perform that's the day that we live in now so it's a little bit higher you know the bar is higher now for us performance dogs breeder okay but you know still that's still the concept is still the same get you a good looking dog that performs well and has all the genetic attributes that you want and breed them together two two of the same breed them together that bring something extra to the table so you can get that hybrid vigor breed them together Okay, produce, keep everything, breed them together, breed us, then you inbreed those when you got that super big, you know, that big genetic pool, then you start inbreeding the best of those together. Okay, until it starts to break down, then you bring another out to there. Okay, based on the dogs, not the pedigree. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Let me see, man. I, I see I see you had a couple things you mentioned, uh, RKBB. Okay, so RKBB said, I used to have no paperwork until I came across this pedigree database and I learned how to read papers. I took the info, I documented and put all the breedings that I knew on the record. Okay, yes, sir. Now, I, I'm sure you're familiar with this RKBB and a lot of y'all might be too. The old school guys, right, they just wrote down their pedigree, okay? Um, the pedigree that I got on, uh, Red Tiger and his brother that I bought from, uh, Buff Dog, it was handwritten, you know? So just because it's not with the registry doesn't mean that that dog does not have a pedigree. You understand what I'm saying? I want y'all to understand this loud and clear. A registry does not dictate a pedigree. They just hold your pedigree paperwork. They just hold the data in their database these registries. However, if you have a handwritten pedigree, that is an official pedigree because you know the dogs three generations and beyond. Top and bottom. That means dame, excuse me, sire and dame. Okay? So if you have a handwritten pedigree, that's the same as having, you know, it with a registry, papers with a registry. Okay? It's all about just knowing the dogs. It's Holding and having the records of the dogs, all right? So that's what's up right there, RKBB. That's what's up, man. So salute to your pedigree, man. 
All right, and you mentioned this too. You said, I started my blood with backyard pits <clears throat> and started crossbreeding bullies and band dogs into it. Now I've been running more bully blood into my uh, dogs, uh, building my own consistent look. Okay, yep, yep. I mean, let's keep it real with, you know, let's keep it real with the world, RKBB. We know uh, the majority of these bullies um, are mixed breeds anyway. You know what I mean? Majority of them are mixed breeds. So, you know, yeah. And you and you can easily, you know, have them registered as bullies, man. You're mixed breeds. And it is what it, that's what all these dudes do in, in the bully breed. Anyway, they all they do is paper hang. You know what I'm saying? So um, salute to, you know, salute to that, you know, starting your own blood and stuff like that. I encourage you guys to do that. You know, I, I encourage you guys to, you know, be creative in the lab. You know, definitely have a plan. Um, make sure it makes sense um, as far as what you want to do with your dogs and, you know, you know, start cooking, start, start experimenting. It's an experiment though. You know, don't expect to get the best when you're experimenting, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's all pieces to a genetic puzzle. If you have a plan and you know what you're picking out of that experiment, then you can make it all make sense in the end. At the end, you can make the genetics make sense, but it's going to take a while. It's a process, okay? But I do encourage you guys, man, you know, if you have the gift to create, get in your lab. Get in your lab. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't let nobody talk you out of doing what you want to do with your dogs, okay? Because a lot of people want to tell you about what you got and what you're doing. Don't let them do it, you know what I'm saying? At all. Um, other than, you know, other than that, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about um, tonight, you guys. You know, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, papers are hype. It really is a lot of hype. I bought into the hype earlier on in my dog man uh, career and uh, found out the truth and, uh, you know, was really scratching my head at, at a point, you know, like, why am I not producing these dogs that are so-called in my pedigree? You know, I spent the money, I'm breeding them, I'm not seeing it, I'm not seeing the results, I'm seeing something totally different. And, you know, it's because the paperwork, you know, it's, it's a lot of fabricated dogs in the paperwork. You know, what you see is not what you get a lot of times. And what you see, I'm talking about in the paperwork, right? What you see is not what you get in the paperwork, okay? However, if the dog that you have, okay, can produce what you see, that is what you're going to get. Not every dog that you see, right, can produce itself. Okay, that's something that you're going to find out too when you breed dogs. Not every dog that looks amazing, that has amazing phenotype and genotype will produce itself. That's just a fact. Okay. Some dogs that don't look amazing might be mediocre phenotypically and genotypically can produce amazing dogs. That happens as well, too. You know how you figure that out when you keep whole litters and then you breed them and you see like, damn, this is an ugly bitch. But man, she produced the best damn fucking dogs. Excuse my language. I'm working on my cursing, y'all, so I apologize for that. So she she produces amazing dogs, but she's ugly. She's an ugly bitch. Or this bitch is amazing looking, but she's not producing herself. She's producing less. You know, this stud is amazing. He's not producing himself. That's That happens. It really does. However, how would you know if you don't have all the genetics to to, to see who produces what and how they produce? How would you know if you only keep it one, two puppies? You would never know, right? You would say, oh, I'm never doing that breeding again off of two puppies. But, you know, maybe the puppy you sold or the puppy you called out could have been the one that produced them exceptional performance dogs. But, you know, your eye wasn't on point because you picking puppies and shit, right? You letting the puppy tell you what your dog is going to be. Versus letting a mature dog tell you what your dog's going to be. And then breeding that mature dog and seeing what it produces. So that you can keep those genetics going. Based off of it being a great producer. Okay, Because not every dog is a great producer. 
So, you know, as I close out, you know, I want to thank you guys for showing up. Um, you know, this cook up, I, I, I know I'm dropping jewels. If you, if you cook up dogs like I do, you can relate. If you've had hundreds of breedings like I've had, you will understand my logic, okay, in the lab, right? If you're in the lab, you'll understand my logic behind the breakdown, okay? And you will get, you will get it. You will not depend on pedigrees for your genetic recipes. You'll just depend on the dogs, the dogs, if you know multiple dogs in that dog's pedigree. Or the dog, if you only know one dog, the dog don't have no paper, you don't know no, you know, you don't know anything about it, but you know about that particular dog, you'll just depend on that and pray to God that what you match it with, it will produce. Okay. You just pray to God that me breeding these dogs together, it will produce, Lord. And then, you know, keep the litter so that you can find out. Keep the litter. It's the only way you find out if it produces. Okay. And that's why I've kept many litters. And that's why I'm keeping the majority of that Roman and the uh, prima donna litter because I want to know myself what each and every one of them dogs can do. Okay? I'm definitely keeping in touch with my two clients that bought the two females. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm keeping in touch with them so I can see and assess, you know, their dogs. But I, I got the other. I got the other four that I'm going to assess myself okay so um like i said thank you guys for showing up you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up with that um rkbb man much love and respect man thank you for showing up jerry hurley man thank you for your uh consistency man big salute to you um you know we're gonna, we gonna keep it going you know i mean shit consistency is the key you know i'm gonna make sure i make time for this podcast every thursday night and we're just going to continue to build and we're going to continue to learn. And uh, like I said, I hope you guys are respecting and, and, and enjoy the information and, and enjoy the uh, the journey. Um, because like I said, what I'm giving you guys is live in the field. And, and it's not something that I heard from, heard from somebody, you know, it's, this is something that I've experienced. And it's something that's playing today information that you can apply right now and it works like oh shit what coach said you remember what coach said yeah that shit work right now what coach said right now it works okay right now it's not something all oh, that you that how it used to be coach yeah back in the day you couldn't really depend on the pedigree but now ped pedigree is 100 percent. you know paperwork's 100 percent. not psych psych say that to yourself psych because it's not 100%, okay? Not even the dog in front of you is 100%, but it's more reliable than the paperwork. So I'm telling y'all, the dog in front of you is more reliable than the paperwork. So as I close, can a great performance dog be valuable without paperwork? Yes. Yes, it sure can. Matter of fact, more valuable. More valuable than any star-spangled out, star-studded champion, purple-ribboned out, show dog, performance dogged out, paperwork. I promise you it can. Just hey, cook it up in the lab and see what happens, okay? Go out there, take you a dog with the best paperwork, and then take you the dog, take you the dog that is the best without no paperwork, and cook them up. And see who produces better. I promise you that dog without the paperwork that looks the best versus that dog with the best paperwork will outproduce it. Promise you that. Especially when we talk about performance. Not no show dog shit. Performance dog. We talking before, this, is, this ain't a show dog show. It's performance dog. Cook that dog that's great without paperwork versus that dog with great paperwork and see who outproduces that. Like, See which one produces outproduces it. Guarantee you it'll be the one that's great looking versus the one that has great paperwork. Promise you it will be that. All right? So, like I said, big salute to you guys. Thank you guys for showing up. You know what I'm saying? Go back in time, man. Go back to the first episodes, man, and just, you know, take that journey, man. So much game that I'm dropping to you guys. So, so much. Take that journey. You know what I mean? Plug in your headphones. Listen. 
you know, apply. Not only just listen, apply it. If you're doing this dog shit like I'm doing, apply it. I promise you it works, okay? I promise you what I'm telling you is not fabricated. It's not extra credit. I'm not on no jibber jabber jaw, okay? I'm taking my time out to drop some jewels on y'all. Live from the field, real life playing jewels at work, okay? Apply it and, be, uh, you know, thank me later on. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, coach. Appreciate that. It's all love, man. You know what I mean? That's the least I can do is give back to y'all. So, man, I appreciate you guys for showing up. Love y'all. Uh, come back next Thursday. You know what I mean? I'm sure I'm going to have another great cook-up. All the previous ones were great. I'm sure I'm going to have another one cooking up for y'all next Thursday, man. But until next time, man, you know what I mean? Much love and respect. I'm out.